Welcome to Westminster Shorter Catechism, question 60. We're going to start with question uh, 57 to get our bearings. This has to do with the fourth commandment. So, question 57, what is the fourth commandment? Answer, the fourth commandment is, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now we come to question 60. How is the Sabbath to be sanctified? Answer, the Sabbath is to be sanctified by a holy resting all that day, even from such worldly employments and recreations as are lawful on other days, and spending the whole time in the public and private exercises of God's worship, except so much as is to be taken up in the works of necessity and mercy. So, what does this mean? Well, we have been kind of on a journey through the fourth commandment at this point. Uh, we've answered the question, what is required of the fourth commandment? And we said that the answer is, uh, what's required is to keep holy the times that God has appointed, specifically the Sabbath. And then we said, which is the Sabbath? And the answer is that ever since the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Sabbath is the first day of the week, which we call Sunday. So now the question is, how is this Sabbath to be sanctified? What does it mean to keep it holy? And the answer we start out with is we keep it holy, we sanctify it, by a holy resting. And that's exactly what we're going to fill out here, is what does the holy resting mean? And then we answer the question, how long? Well, all that day. So all that day is 24 hours. The Jews keep Sabbath from sundown till sundown. The Jewish day technically begins at sundown, um, just like in creation in Genesis 1. And Christians have kept Sabbath uh, sun up to sun up. We do that basically uh, as a response to the, uh, the resurrection of Christ, which happened at sunrise. Uh, but even there, we can see that the Sabbath day, although it only is the, that 24-hour period, it requires some preparation because it says here, we, we uh, rest that day from such worldly employments and recreations as are lawful on other days, uh, which really means anything, work, um, going to get gas, uh, going to get some groceries, eating out, whatever. Uh, we're going to rest from that. In fact, we already said earlier that it's not just we who are going to rest from that, but all of the servants, manservant, maidservant, animals, now, we don't typically have a lot of animals that work for us, nor do we have manservants and maidservants. But in our society, which is capitalist, uh, we don't have manservants and maidservants because we just have people who do those services. So we're going to rest on the Sabbath from using the services that would require other people to work for us. So uh, that's, that's just kind of the negative approach to what we're doing. We're resting. And, uh, and that actually requires a fair amount of preparation. So, for example, uh, you do the things that you would otherwise have to do on a Sunday on Saturday. This is exactly what we saw in Exodus when God was first teaching the Jews about the Sabbath. Remember, he took them out of Egypt. He gave them the manna in the desert and... 
it said that uh, they get they got enough each day just for that day, except for the day before the Sabbath. That day, they got enough for two days. And you remember that if they took any more than what they needed for a single day on any of the other days, it would rot and turn to worms uh, before the next day started. But the stuff they gathered the day before the Sabbath would last two days. The idea was to teach them. You prepare for the Sabbath. So we prepare for the Sabbath. Uh, it's a holy resting. So that's the, the kind of negative aspect is we don't work. Now, uh, the question then is, what do we do? Well, the answer is we spend the whole time in the public and private exercises of God's worship, except so much as to be taken up in the works of necessity and mercy. So uh, the whole time in the public and private exercises of God's worship, that means that during the Sabbath, we're basically worshiping God. Um, we're worshiping God by ourselves. We're worshiping God together. Uh, but that's what we're trying to do during the Sabbath. And actually, the larger catechism goes on a little bit, uh, a little bit farther. It says, uh, not only from such uh, works as are at other times sinful, but also from such worldly employments and recreations as are on other days lawful. And it says, we're going to make it our delight to spend the whole day uh, in public and private exercises of God's worship. So Sabbath, it's not really about, uh, well, it's definitely not about kind of drudging along to church, drudging back home. It's about making our delight to look and see the freedom that God has given us from working on the other days. See, this is the whole idea of it being laid out in creation is he works for six days. And each one of those days, he's setting things in motion. He's setting day and night in motion. He's setting water versus land in motion. He's setting plants in motion, animals, stars, sun and moon, people, all of it. It's all getting worked out on those six days. And the seventh day, God rests. Now, I have a guess here, and the Bible doesn't say it. My guess is that that seventh day probably had at least as much excitement, actually, I would say more excitement than the other six days. Because on the seventh day, everything is beautiful and perfect, and God has put it all into place, and now it's delighting in the Lord. It now, all of those things too, have that Sabbath day as a worship to God. So that's what we're doing on the Sabbath. We're, we're preparing and worshiping our God. We're setting our eyes on the great light above whom and, and in front of whom there is nothing else that is so bright, so glorious. The light in which we will, we will all uh, bask one day in heaven. We are setting ourselves up to look up and see the Lord for a whole day together and privately. It says here, there is an exception. Uh, we do that except so much as to be taken up in the works of necessity and worship, uh, necessity and mercy. So there are things that we need to do on Sabbath. There are people who need help. There are um, kids who need to get dressed. Uh, there are people who get sick on Sabbath. Actually, this is why doctors and nurses have always, uh, it's always been appropriate for them to work on the Sabbath, not because it's their time to make money. It's because there are people who get sick and hurt on the Sabbath, and they need, uh, they need mercy. They need help. And uh, so it's also why we volunteer on the Sabbath. So the, the Bible verse that I want to draw your attention to in particular is uh, Nehemiah 13. It is uh, a really, I think, kind of profound look at the importance of the Sabbath. So Nehemiah spent about 12 years in Jerusalem. He got commissioned by King Artaxerxes to go and rebuild Jerusalem. He rebuilt it, got everything he needed to get in place, and then uh, he went back to uh, the capital, which I think was Susa, something like that, and then he came back to Jerusalem to see how things were going, and it was not going well. Specifically, 
The priests even were marrying uh, pagans. Uh, the temple was in disarray. It was being used for all sorts of things. But there was one thing in particular he spent a lot of time talking about how poorly it was going. It was the Sabbath. So Nehemiah 13, it says in verse 15, in those days when he returned to Jerusalem, he says, I saw in Judah people treading wine presses on the Sabbath, bringing in heaps of grain, loading them on donkeys, also wine, grapes, figs, all kinds of loads which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I warned them on the day when they sold food. Tyrians also, who lived in the city, brought in fish and all kinds of goods and sold them on the Sabbath to the people of Judah in Jerusalem itself. And then I confronted the nobles of Judah and said to them, What is this evil thing that you are doing, profaning the Sabbath day? Did not our fathers act in this way? And did not our God bring all this disaster on us and on this city? Now you are bringing more wrath on Israel by profaning the Sabbath. But he goes on from there. He says, As soon as it began to grow dark at the gates of Jerusalem before the Sabbath, I commanded that the doors be shut, and I gave orders that they should not be opened until after the Sabbath, and I stationed some of my servants at the gates, that no load might be brought in on the Sabbath. Then the merchants and the sellers of all kinds and wares, they lodged outside Jerusalem once or twice, but I warned them, and I said to them, why do you lodge outside the wall? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. From that time, they did not come on the Sabbath. Then, so basically, they're, they were going to set up their stands just outside the city. Nehemiah can't touch us here. We're just going to do it outside the city. It's not in the walls. He says, no, that is not enough. You have to stop. And it wasn't just Jews who, were, who he was objecting to doing things. It was these uh, Tyrians. That's, that means they're from the city of Tyre. They're not Jews. They're pagans. They worship Baal and, uh, and Ashtoreth. And, and that is not okay. They are not allowed to sell to the Jews on the Sabbath. It doesn't matter if, if you buy something from a Christian or not. What matters is that you not make someone work on the day that God has given for rest. But I warned them, and I said to them, why do you lodge outside the wall? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. And from that time on, they did not come on the Sabbath. Then I commanded the Levites that they should purify themselves and come to guard the gates to keep the Sabbath day holy. Remember this also in my favor, O God, and spare me according to the greatness of your steadfast love. We're looking at a man and a story about a man who was respected and who was uh, remembered by God in the Bible and forever because he kept the Sabbath holy. And my hope and prayer is that uh, we would learn to keep the Sabbath holy with such zeal and with such rigor. Uh, let's pray. Father, I thank you for setting aside a day, a day of rest, a day that you have made holy for us, a day that we return to you. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would bless us with faithfulness, holiness. Sanctify your people to yourself, Lord. Do not let us bring great wrath upon ourselves by profaning your day. I pray that you would make it instead a joy a great delight to worship you and honor you on this Sabbath day. In Christ's name, amen.